The Sports Scouting Report with Lee Burkeen. Brought to you by Harvey Autos in Shreveport, Bossier City. The name you've trusted for years. GEICO, the insurance savings you expect. Supreme Chevrolet. Expect more from Supreme Automotive Group and Gonzalez. Total Car Care. Tire Shop and Automotive Repair in Baton Rouge. Bollinger Shipyards. 75 years of delivering high quality vessels. And the Bugman. We get them before they get you. Here's your host, Libra King. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Libra King. I'm Mackenzie Alexander, and I'm so excited because today we're at Dutchtown High School where they'll be versing Covington High School, which the players that we're gonna get to interview today at Covington High School, man, are they a story. I and mean, we have four great players that just, they're generations of football that have just impacted, I mean, just, from fathers to grandfathers, the impact of football throughout their family history is just incredible and we're so excited for you guys to see. Um, including Highland Williams, uh, one of the four players that we're going to interview today. His grandfather was Mike Williams, one of the first, the second actually to be specific, um, LSU football players to be African American. So what a crazy, awesome story that we're going to get today from Highland just with the interview. So we're super excited and yeah. We hope you guys enjoy the show. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Can I have your name, your position, and your school? Uh, Lawson Champagne, play defensive tackle, and I go to Covington High. Lawson, uh, you have quite the history in your family with football. Obviously, you've been really successful here at Covington. Kind of walk me through that. What's what's it been like? Um, played everything since I was little, and uh, parents, whole family's always been real big on that. You know, dad went to LSU, mom went to. Uh, college at somewhere in Mississippi, played softball. Um, they just always been pushing me and once I got to high school I joined football or junior high, joined football and uh, really been pushing me. So. What has your dad taught you? I mean obviously he played at LSU, correct? Yeah. What, yeah. Did he, what position did he play? Uh, he played left tackle. Okay. Tackle and DT which uh, before, before this year I've been playing left tackle so he's been helping me um, pretty much a secondary coach for me and uh, uh, move it over to defense and he knows all about that too that was his main position so been, it's been nice a big to have help. that to relate yeah. to each other because yeah, it's definitely. like it's one thing to teach you without not even knowing what it's like but he knows what it's like yeah he does he does and uh, he's been a big help so what would you say the biggest part of football the hardest part is maybe not even just physically discipline I think um, Last week's game, that was our probably our biggest biggest thing was discipline, just you know, penalties, just mentally getting in the game and I think uh, I think that's what we've we've been focusing on this week. So Do you think what you guys have made through progress with the discipline is gonna really show today in today's yeah, game? I think it will. I think it will. What are some of the things you've been doing to prepare for this game this week? Um, just if like I said, penalties last year uh, last week. We've been harping on that, uh, watching a ton of film. You know, going over plays over and over again, and uh, just think that's going to show today. Obviously, since you got to play at LSU, I'm sure you have a lot of people telling you around you, "Are you going to go play at LSU?" You know what I mean? They're like always wondering. But like, what is your thought process? Is that where you want to play, or is there maybe somewhere else you want to play? Uh, focus is academics, yeah. but I do want to play in college. LSU. I mean, if that's an option for me, great. But I'm um, thinking smaller school like SLU, some, somewhere around there. Because people don't realize, but if you go to the big D1 school, yeah, you can get your name on the roster, but yeah. are you even going to see the field? Exactly. Because if you don't see the field, how are you even going to get recognized by yeah. scouts and by you know, the NFL, things like that? Yeah. So have you had any offers yet? Uh, no offers yet, just sticking, grinding this year and uh, hoping for the best. Okay, you have anything else to say? Go Lions. Thank you. Supreme Chevrolet. 
Expect more from Supreme Automotive Group and Gonzalez. Okay, who am I here with today? Uh, Coach Greg Salter, Covington High School. All right, Coach, how are you feeling about today's game? Uh, we're excited. You know, we had a tough, tough week. Um, you know, suffered some injuries and a tough loss last week after uh, starting off strong against John Eric. So we're excited to be back on the field. Uh, Dutchtown always has a great team, um, always well coached, a lot, lot of really good athletes. So it'd be a great test for us, and uh, we're looking forward to, to seeing where we stand. As a coach, when injuries come up and things that are just so out of your control, what is the way that you just kind of handle that? Well, I mean, I think it's like you just said, you know, it's, it's, it's out of our control, it's out of the kids' control, yeah. and it's something that every team at some point is going to face, and that's what we told our kids this week, you know. Unfortunately for us, it was week two. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's got to be next man up mentality. Uh, you know, we have so many seniors here that, that this season means so much to. Uh, guys have worked so hard, not just seniors, but the whole team, so hard through the offseason and everything else. And I think it would be a disservice uh, to David or Kylan or any of the guys that don't get to play tonight and strap it up. It would be a disservice to them not give their best effort and uh, pick up their slack. What is it like just getting to coach a great program like this? And I mean, not only this program, but just the ones before. I mean, just the history, legends. Yeah, you know, it's it's something, it's, it's a place where I grew up uh, with my grandfather being the coach. Um, you know, it, it's something that I always, uh, I always dreamed of being a head football coach. I never thought I'd be so lucky for it to be at Covington High School. And uh, to do that and, and you know, to, to have experienced some of the successes that we've had and to be able to deal with the kids, still same guys in the community, um, you know, that my grandfather coached and we're getting, you know, those next generation players. Uh, it, it really is special and something that I don't take for granted. Having your grandfather be the coach, what was that like? Uh, you know, I tell you what, he casts a pretty big big shadow. You know, yeah. it's one thing when your grandpa's a coach, but when he's a Hall of Fame coach and a state champion and everything else, you know, uh, you know, it, it certainly sets the bar high, but it's something that, you know, every day, you know, uh, I do my best to, to, to try to act in a way and carry myself in a way, coach in a way that would make him proud. And uh, every day I fail, uh, but, it, it, it you know, I'm, I'm eager to wake up the next day and try it again. And, you know, again, it, it, it's all about making not only him proud, but the alumni proud. Uh, such a story program. People take a lot of pride in it. And, uh, you know, and no, and no one more so than me. What's something that maybe people just do not understand about coaching or maybe just kind of like the task? That it is. I mean, it's a great well, task, but... Yeah, I think the, uh, you know, the, the thing that no one, and I don't think anyone will ever understand, you know, the amount of time that you put in, the amount of time that you're away from the families, unless you are Sacrifice. a coach... Uh, are a coach and you go through it you know it's easy to say but it's it you know it's it's a grind it's just like it's a grind for the kids throughout the summers yeah. and the off season uh, but the other thing that I would say you know as a head coach uh, I feel like I get to I, I focus a lot less on the football part of it the X's and O's yeah. um, you know it's it's more about you know the kids and managing the kids and uh, you know you get a you get a front row seat to, to the home lives and and the uh, you know, every, all the distractions and everything that these guys go through outside of school. Yeah. And it, as a head coach, you realize that the football part is very minuscule in the grand, screen, the grand scheme of things. So uh, we do our best to try to develop them as, as people um, and hope that, you know, if we teach them, the, you know, the, the, the right way to care themselves and the right, right way to prepare and, and, and teach them, you know, those core values that it'll translate on the field. And again, we've been very blessed with some successful teams and successful athletes and, uh, 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 it, it's you know my grandfather was one thing he always said you know it's it's a, it's a profession uh, you'll you'll never see the rewards you'll never get rich doing it but you'll be rich in the rewards that you get from it and uh, certainly holds true and uh, I, I wouldn't wouldn't want to do anything else. I feel like being a coach is super underrated because I mean you are literally shaping these kids, it, especially being a high school coach. I mean when they go to ninth grade that's a, that's just when it's starting. You know what I mean? But throughout it's they're growing, they're evolving, they're flourishing. These people so. You know, especially when they go on and to play in college and, you know, the NFL, things like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that's a part people don't understand. It is, you know, and, and we keep track of all those guys, but not just the ones that were successful. You know, we've got, we've got kids in the program that are doctors and lawyers and teachers, and I have uh, a few guys uh, on my staff that, that I've coached. Um, you know, so we take pride in every one of those kids that go off and be, you know, as we said, we just want productive citizen in the community. Uh, but the most important thing to me, and I tell every team at the end of the year is, uh, uh, you know, the, whole, the only, while the media will judge us by the scoreboard, yeah. uh, a scoreboard will never define who a coach really is. Uh, our wins and losses come 10 years, 15 years down the road when you see a young man become a, you know, a great father, a good husband, and 
you know, uh, again, a pr productive member in the community. So, uh, again, that's that's all the blessings that come with it. And, uh, again, I wouldn't want to do anything else. Um, you have some great, great players, but let's just highlight some of them. I mean, Lawson Champagne, what are your thoughts on the kid? Uh, great kid, hardworking kid. Uh, he was a young man that came in. Uh, first time he ever played football was in, uh, in, in seventh grade. Uh, so he was kind of a blank slate when he came in, almost like a robot. He didn't have any bad habits, great work, work ethic. Uh, you know, his parents were both successful athletes, so he had that, uh, that passion to be, you know, to be a great player. And, uh, you know, I can't say enough good things about him. He uh, just does everything right and the kind of kid you want in your program. Yeah, I mean, talking to Lawson, he just seems very humble. He is, yes. And I mean, you know, having so much success within the bloodline, mm -hmm. you, you never even know. Right, right. Yeah, and it's something, you know, he, he knows of uh, not only his dad's success in college, but his mom was, uh, you know, I, I was a couple years behind his mom in school, and she was one of the, the best uh, softball pitchers in the state. For four years in a row, she was first team All-State. Like, she was a legit athlete. So he, he, he's got it on both sides, and, uh, you know, blessed with that, that talent, blessed with, you know, again, they were – they were, they were hard workers and they, you know, had to uh, had to grind to get the success they got yeah. and they passed those traits on to him and uh, couldn't be more proud of him. All right, Kylan Williams, what are your thoughts on the kid? Kylan is, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to say that he is going to be a special talent because he already is. He's yeah. been very successful for us as a freshman and, uh, and so far to start his sophomore year, but uh, you know, I have to pinch myself knowing that I get to have him for two more years because um, he is uh, very talented, but he still continues to get better and better. Uh, he's, you know, as he learns the game and be able to apply that to his skill set, uh, the sky's the limit for the young man. Another hardworking kid, good kid. Um, you know, comes from comes from a, a you know very athletic, talented background, but uh, you know, also another humble kid. Is there any other kids maybe that we didn't? I know, and I want to. Uh, I want to plead the fifth because there's so many that I could name, and uh, so many more that deserve to be named. So I'll just leave it to the ones that you asked about, to where I don't leave anybody out, hurt anybody's feelings, because uh, again, there's so many. You know, great senior class. Um, we have a lot of returning starters this year. Um, you know, you'll see. You know, a couple quarterbacks play tonight that have been. You know, been. Uh, you know done great things for us the last few years, our running backfield, uh, our receivers, uh, every, everything has just continued to improve our defensively, you know, our kids continue to buy in, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see where this team goes, and again, I know tonight's going to be a tough opponent, but we're going to get to learn a lot about ourselves tonight. But you got to go through these games because right. it's Always. Great competition. This is, these are the games that mold you yeah. and, uh, and let you know you know what your weaknesses are and and where you can be successful and uh and, and to let you know that you know you can compete with anybody and that, that's where we want to be but yeah i don't want to single out any yeah. kids uh because i love our team what's the biggest piece of advice for the last question that you've received as a coach or maybe that just has helped mentor you that has mentored me uh look i i mean it's it's uh you know, my, my, like I said, I, I, I was very blessed to grow up around my grandpa and all the little things that he told me. Um, and he told me, he gave me so much great advice. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the first bit of advice he ever okay. gave me. Whenever, whenever I started coaching, the first thing he ever told me, and this will tell you the type of person I was, was make sure you learn every kid's first name. Don't be that coach that calls kids by their last name. Make sure that they know that you know who they are as a person. And uh, and when and, and when you're coaching the person, they'll do anything for you as an athlete. So uh, I'll leave you with my first bit of it. That, that was my first tidbit. Um, the many lessons over the years and things that I've learned on my own, learn on the fly. And like I said, I, I fail every day and continue to learn and, and hope that every experience just makes me better. All right, Coach Greg Salter, everybody. We hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much, Coach. Congrats. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. All right, guys. We hope you're enjoying the video. We'll be back after this. Total Car Care. Tire Shop and Automotive Repair in Baton Rouge. Who am I here with today? Amari Smith. What's your position? I'm a slot receiver. Okay, and what, uh, what school do you go to? I go to Covington High. 
Okay, Mari, what is it like being on Covington's football team? I mean, obviously there's a lot of great talent on there, talent from the past. Can you maybe walk me through that? I mean, it's first inspiring. But I mean, it's really, it's really just a good experience and all. Like, just so many good people have passed through and stuff like that. So, you got so much to look up to and stuff like that. What is one thing that maybe somebody's told you as a mentor or even a coach on the team that has really stuck with you? Mm, get bigger. Get bigger? Get bigger. You want to talk about that a little bit? So in this game of football, if you're not big, is that a big, big crucial part? Uh, in some aspects, yeah. yeah. We, you know, we got to get bigger in order to break some tackles, make some tackles, yeah. things like that. Then, when colleges look at you and stuff like that, they'll want you to be a certain weight, certain height, and stuff like that. Where'd your love of the game come from? Did you have a grandfather or father that played football? I mean, everybody really on both sides of my family. It's just like, I feel like when I was born, I had the football in my hand, so. Yeah. My father played, my grandfather played. Where'd your father play at Covington, right? No, my father played at Bugaloosa. My grandfather played at Covington. Yeah. Okay. So, what position did he play at Covington? He played running back. He was he was nice too. Yeah. Did he Very get all state or anything like that? Uh, he. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he got all state. He got a few records in the record book. He went on the Southern Miss and then he played for the New Orleans Saints. So, has he ever told you about just kind of the journey when it comes from high school to college, then to the NFL? Like, has he told you kind of an inside scoop of like that's what it's like? Yeah, uh, he just he just really told me it's gonna be hard. I just need to really get better, work on all my techniques and stuff like that. Make sure I'm doing my best. Make sure I'm doing good in school yeah. and stuff like that. Make sure I'm always doing good academically. Yeah, because you're a student athlete, yes, first a student, and I feel like sometimes people will get so it's such a big head, and they'll forget that they have to focus on their school to even be eligible. Yes, ma'am. And I feel like that's a problem, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I just really, everybody in my family really wants me to focus academically way before coming out here and, and doing what I do for football. Making sure I got all A's, they don't even like B's for real. So, <laughs> yeah, that's good know. though because, you know, having that kind of mentorship, having that push, you know, you're going to thank them later, right? Yes, because some people are like all over the place in their futures and, and you're going to be like set because of what your foundation has been. Yes, ma'am. Right? Um, when it comes to obviously having this big name around, you know, your grandfather or things like that, is it hard on you sometimes when you feel like you have to live up to this expectation? Uh, I don't, I don't believe it's hard. I just like, I kind of like living up to it because it gives me a goal. It gives yeah. me a goal, like when I'm on the field, you know, he did good, so I'm like, I gotta do good. Yeah. Gotta, gotta show out, you know. Gotta make a problem. Yeah. Live up to it. All right, what's maybe a part of football people just do not understand? Like people that may be watching and people who are football fanatics that they just see y'all on the field but they don't really understand maybe just the little things that are important that, you know what I mean? Little things, I think some little things, it's like when you're deep in the game, a lot of people want you to catch every ball or come off the ball hard, but you know, when, it, when it's deep in the game, you'll be tired. Now, of course, you got to make the catches and stuff like yeah. that. But, you know, sometimes people don't see the ball how you see the ball or, you know, see the field how you see the field. So it's it's harder talking to the people who don't really understand that. And what's your message to those who don't understand that? Uh, I mean, I can't really say too much, you know. It's, it's whatever. Okay. We just got we just gotta perform. Yeah. Okay, well thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed and yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great game. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. All right, Justin, how are you feeling about today's game? Good, feeling real good about today. What have you guys been doing to prepare? Uh, we've been grinding hard. We, main thing we've been trying to do is just stay focused, 
not um, be able to finish throughout. And what school do you go to? Covington High School. What position are you? Running back and receiver. How do you like it? I like it a lot. Um, running back, I played running back my whole life, but receiver, it's getting, it's getting to it. I like it though, I like it. What are the biggest challenges between the both? Um, running back, I would say that's easy. No. But yeah. receiver, it's like catching the ball and like not knowing who will be in front of you when you catch it. Like You can get hit at any time, catching slants and digs. So that's about... So trust is a big process. Yeah, definitely. Um, you and your grandfather play the same position. We tell me a little bit about your grandfather and you know his kind of dream with football. Um, he was always like big on like perfection, listening, and definitely respect. And he's a great person, definitely. And he he teaches me always like never give up, no matter what point in the game. Just always keep your head up and stuff. Have you received any offers yet? Not yet, but I actually should get off at this game because. Okay. From who? Graceland University. Okay, where is that located? In Iowa. How do you feel about that? That's kind of far away. It feels amazing, man. Yeah. And just having the contact and knowing that somebody's watching you through all the hard work that you're putting in, it feels amazing. What is a side of maybe football people really don't understand? Maybe on the mental side or just things that they don't see that behind the scenes. Um, seeing that like when you're not on the field, like you messing up, like and like how they look at it. It's just like you messing up, like you just sold the game, but like you gotta really take that in and move on to the next play. So biggest thing I would say is just never give up and just, you know, teamwork. Sounds like you have really good mentorship around you. Who's been your biggest mentor in your life? My grandfather. In what ways? And like pushing me to never give up and stuff like that. And my mom, also a big part. She was always there for me. So you've stuff. been playing football your whole life? Yes, ma'am. Was it something you just kind of put your cleats on and you knew it was something you wanted to do for the rest of your life? Yes, man. Playing, from playing in the yard, growing up, playing against older people, older cousins and stuff, definitely. Have yeah. you gone to Covington your whole life? Yes, man. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, go Lions. Thank you. All right. Supreme Chevrolet. Expect more from Supreme Automotive Group and Gonzalez. All right, who do I have here with me today? My name is Kylan Williams. Okay, Kylan, what position are you? Running back at Covington High School. All right, Kylan, tell me a little bit about uh, your background with football and kind of just with that position. I've been playing football since Little League, from junior high on up to now. I was, I was once a defensive player, but I switched to offense once I got to junior high. I was playing running back in junior high. And I'm playing running back now at Covington High School. What is one of the things at Covington High School that you've learned, maybe through football or just through a mentor, that has really helped you in your career? A lot of things at Covington High that's really helped me in my career was like the coaches. The coaches actually helped me out a lot throughout the summer. I yeah. actually got a lot better from last year. My freshman year, this year I'm a sophomore. Obviously, you have a bloodline when it comes to football. Your grandfather, Mike Williams, he was the second African-American LSU football player, which is incredible. Can you maybe tell me about that from what you've heard or what your grandfather's told you? Yeah, I didn't really get to see him play in college. I only seen like old videos. I saw some old videos of him playing cornerback in the NFL. He played cornerback at LSU. Yeah, I once trained with him before a few times before he got sick. But since he's been sick, we haven't really been doing a lot of things. But keeping close contact with him. Yeah. Was that a big part in the influence in playing football? Definitely. Him and his career was definitely a big part, played a big part on my football career. Yeah. I learned a lot from him. Growing what is it like to him. have somebody who just has that much you know, knowledge of the game? It's actually good because he actually helps a lot of our family members that was playing the game. I have a lot of more family members that's playing right now still that he helped. I also help with them. Um, do you have any offers yet? No, ma'am. If there's a dream school you could go play for, who would it be? Georgia. Bulldogs? Really? Okay, why, why, why Georgia? Uh, like when I first started watching college football, it was Georgia. Georgia was actually the first team I've seen. They had a good set of backs. Nice set of running backs, nice set of receivers and cornerbacks. I've been watching them since, liking them since, trying to get there. Uh, what do you think of Stetson Bennett? 
I'm not going to talk about that. No comment. Um, what's a part of football that's kind of, you didn't even realize was, was going to be a hard part until you really got into maybe your high school career just as you were getting older? The size of the player. Like, when my eighth grade year, before I got to high school, I thought everybody was going to be like my size. I thought I was actually big a little bit. But once I got up, everybody was bigger than me. I was like one of the smallest ones. But I was still playing good on the field with the older guys last year. Was playing good this year. Out on an injury right now for a week. But I'll be back. What happened? I rolled my ankle against Franklin. I'm sorry. Um, okay, I guess last question. Um, what is just the greatest piece of advice that your grandfather has given you? What is the love of this game? My grandpa told me always stay physical. No matter what position you're in, always stay physical. And always be on point with everything. Got anything else to say? Yeah. Thank you so much. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoy. We had a blast today getting to interview the coaches and the players here at Covington at Dutchtown. And we're super excited for this game. So thank you so much for just taking the time out of your day to do this, coach and players. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. And make sure you come back for another video because we're just getting started. It's going to be great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching the Sports Scouting Report with Lieber King.